Okay, guys, so let's talk about vasodilators now. So these might seem a little familiar because we talked about these when we talked about chronic stable angina. So um, some of these include things like nitroglycerin. Now we're generally not giving nitroglycerin for um, itself, that medication nitroglycerin for blood pressure, um, but we can give it, um, we can give some long acting um, uh, nitrates for, uh, to help with blood pressure. So some of this might actually hopefully, you know, be like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what she's talking about um, and not seem like completely unfamiliar. Um, so vasodilators help blood pressure um, by opening the blood vessels. So I kind of equated this when I talked about hypertension is that, um, you know, normally, uh, normally, um, you know, you can kind of see in this picture, there's like a good amount of space um, for blood to flow. When we have hypertension, we get more narrow, rigid, um, really inflexible um, artery. Um, but what, what vasodilators do is they help to open that back up to allow for better flow. And especially if there's a lot of plaques and stuff in here, um, it can help with improved flow. Um, but we also talked about on the flip side of thing that it can be um, dangerous because they can have a super low drop in their blood pressure. Um, but effectively it decreases resistance resistance in the blood vessels so the heart doesn't have to work so hard to pump blood out and so that blood can flow easier. Um, don't mind my cat, she's needy. Um, so I'm going to move my face away here. <clears throat> so um, some of the meds that you might see given and um, uh, one of the first ones that you'll probably see given most often when it comes to especially like PRN medications that we um, give if ne as needed, it's going to be hydrolazine. Um, so usually this is going to be one of your kind of set um, uh, PRN medications. Um, so like in, in general, if, um, if I have a patient that's hypertensive and maybe they're on medications already or, um, you know, maybe they're off their medications for now or don't take them, um, usually this is like the go-to is hydrolazine. And then, like I mentioned, there's also long-acting nitrates like the isosorbides that, that remember, they have the nitrate in their name um, also can be used. Um, there's a cut some mnemonics and stuff here. So everything's going to be similar like it was for other blood pressure meds. Um, you know, they can, their blood pressure can drop. Um, they can have, um, we want them to change position slowly. But the thing that's going to be different is that severe hypotension. Um, and then also if they're taking the nitrates, it's possible for them to have flushing or a headache. So just know just with nitrates, the flushing and the headache um, can happen. And that is expected. Um, so, oh no, another change position slowly got in here. All right. So I'm, I'm making a mental note here. I'm going to have to go back through this. Um, and then, um, we want to make sure that they change position slowly. Yes. Like with all meds. Um, the other things that are going to be different though, is if you remember back when we learned about nitrates with chronic stable angina, I don't want to take this with erectile dysfunction drugs, because if you remember, these are also vasodilators. And so since these are also vasodilators, you're getting a conjoined vasodilator effect and therefore a super low uh, drop in blood pressure. So um, they shouldn't be taking um, anything that ends in fill, um, uh, what do you call it, um, when they're taking their vasodilator. The other thing we want to do is monitor weight. So when you think vasodilation, you want to think of pooling because while vasodilators are great, um, I was about to, I'm, I'm not about to say that the, they'll make it where you can't stand up straight. Don't worry. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rhyme because I, I'm not a good rapper. Um, but needless to say is what can happen is um, blood can end up pooling because there's not as much squeeze. Um, let me say this. You need enough squeeze in your blood vessels to get blood moving in the right direction. Um, but you don't want so much squeeze that it's constricted. So vasodilators, they kind of are the opposite of the spectrum. You know, you have this, you're too constricted. Um, and so there, everything's very narrow and hard to get through, but then your blood vessels open up. You have these very open blood vessels, but now there's nothing squeezing them, giving them pressure to get back to your heart. So these patients can have pooling of blood. Um, so we do kind of monitor their weight and make sure they're not um, gaining an excessive amount. So a uh, client is due for isozorbide dinitrate. The nurse checks their blood pressure and it is 155 over 89. What is the best action? So students hate questions like this because they're like, well, they have a high blood pressure and I'm giving them blood pressure med. What's wrong? Um, they're like looking for a problem. It, uh, believe it or not, sometimes we will give you test questions where actually the answer is give the med. This is safe. Um, not every question is going to be like, this is not safe. So don't look for a problem where there's not one. This patient has a high blood pressure. They are due for a blood pressure med. If their blood pressure is high, what am I going to do? I'm going to give it. Um, it's not too low like the other scenario we did. And, um, you know, this is definitely like, even if this was even higher than this, we still want to give it. So there's many times I come on, uh, there, this happened a little while ago. I came on to my shift and, you know, the nurse told me, hey, we're having trouble with their blood pressure. 
Um, and so I go and I take my first blood pressure and it's really high. It's like 170 something over a hundred something. Um, so I could have called the doctor, done all these things, but she was due for all of her nighttime, you know, uh, medications, like all of her blood pressure meds. So I tried those first. So that's what we always do is we try those. I might look and be like, Ooh, it's super high. Um, and it doesn't mean that I'm not going to notify the doctor, but usually at least if I'm, if I'm going to call the doctor, I want to make sure that I I've told him, Hey, I tried this. Here's how this worked. Cause that's what they're probably going to ask me. If I call a doctor and say, Hey, their blood pressure's high. And they're going to look on their chart and be like, well, aren't they due for blood pressure meds? Um, you know, so you always want to try and give the medication first. Um, now, if there's some like crazy change, if their blood pressure was like normal and all of a sudden it's 200, you're probably going to want to call the doctor. Um, but um, I'm more just talking about for a general patient that's hypertensive, that's hanging more on the hypertensive side. Um, we always give them their meds first because maybe their blood pressure is high because it's showing they're to do for their meds. It's time, um, you know, and so and you'd be surprised sometimes how it can work um, and help out really well. So this is safe to give. All right, that is it for vasodilators. I will see you for ACEs and ARBs next.